Genres have a tendency to eat themselves alive when the next generation are only ever listening and trying to recreate what's in them. When the genres were not created that way, they were created by producers being inspired by many different things to come together. And so I would say, look, go and listen to some jazz or hip hop and then bring something to the table different and just keep it evolving. And I got introduced to kind of noise, um, people just using distortion and feedback, uh, which to some, to listen to in its rawest form can be a bit much. I was like, hang on, the way they're controlling this noise, this controlled distortion and, and this feedback, I could take something like that and incorporate it into my ambient soundscapes and not in such an aggressive way as big harsh feedbacks and stuff, but that sort of mentality and that sound design perspective. And I, and I did, I, I incorporated that into my ambient beds and my textures. I was just drum and bass for 10, 15 years, but then, I got bored. I, was, I felt like I was into more than that. You know, I was listening to so much more and I wanted my music and my DJ sets to represent that. And people often ask me, because I do the multi-genre thing and I'm fortunate enough to get away with it, I can release grime, dubstep, drum and bass, trip hop on my label and people, they'll buy it and, and they'll support it and I can go out and in my DJ sets, it's a similar sort of thing. And that, I'm very fortunate to have that. People often say, can I just set, set out as a multi-genre DJ or producer. Now, yes, but people do like to put you in a box. Media, fans, otherwise they're a bit confused. What is this person all about? It's almost like they have to categorize you to start off with till they really understand what you're about. And I kind of did that with the Nominate thing. I got signed to Temper, which was primarily a dubstep label. And I did my first few releases you probably would call dubstep. And then I started introducing Dub Techno 120. And I threw in a 170 thing. And then by the time I got to my album, it was half 130, half 140, and a bit of drum and bass. So once I'd captivated my audience, if you like, and built a fan base, I then started to show them that I'm more than just that, just by opening my ears to all of the other music, genres and cultures that are not too dissimilar to what I grew up with, was a massive lesson. I learned so much just by entertaining and listening to what, listening to what I thought I didn't like. It's something I really try and project and, and deliver to the next generation. I don't like saying this because I think you should be free as an artist to do what you want, but if you want to get known, sometimes you've just got to say, okay, I'm gonna focus on this part of it first. Build things and then take people on a journey when they're ready. Don't do something you don't like, that's for sure. That's selling out, don't create a, a sound that you're not into. But maybe just say, right, this is my strength right now and I'm gonna focus on that and then let it all grow and spawn from that. I love to share knowledge and I think it's needed. Check out educationandbase.online, that's my online school. We've currently got 115 tutorials on there, about 40, 50 hours. I do my daily tips. Nominate Sound on Facebook. And yeah, just stay open-minded and have open ears.